بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إله العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا رب يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين We thank Allah رب العزة والجلال for having gathered us here once again and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to surround us with the malaika and to cause his mercy and his sakinah to descend upon us and to raise us with the anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam and those whom he has mentioned with them. Ameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a companion known as Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami radiyallahu anhu. This Sahabi would serve the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at night. So when everybody had fallen asleep, he would stand literally guard at the doorstep of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam needed something, he would bring it to him. So perhaps he needed the water to make wudu, he would bring that water for him. Or he needed something, he would take care of it for the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After some time had lapsed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him a question. He says, Salni, ask, what is it that you want, O Rabi'ah? What is it that I can do for you? And Rabi'ah tells him that give me some time so that I can think about the matter, I can ponder over it. He spent some time and then he says, أَسْأَلُكَ مُرَافَقَتَكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I ask you for your companionship in Jannah, O Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says to him, أَوَ غَيْرَ ذَاكَ Is there anything besides that, يَا رَبِعَةَ Are you sure that is all you need? Do you not need a horse to ride? Perhaps you want to get married? I can help you in that regard. So Rabi'ah says, هُوَ ذَاكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ That is what I want, O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم Now, this Sahabi was a Sahabi who was from amongst the people of As-Suffa, the raised platform. And these people were well known to be poor. People who didn't have enough to clothe themselves with. People who didn't have enough to feed themselves. Yet he asks the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم for his companionship in Jannah. The question is, what kind of a companion was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to this man? What kind of a prophet, a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was he to this man such that he wanted to serve him, he wanted to be with him in Jannah as well. Allahu Akbar. The question I'd like to, my, uh, to pose to myself and yourselves today, is those who are under us, those who are our servants, those who are our employees, how do we treat them? Do we treat them with goodness such that they would want to be our companions in Jannah? Allahu Akbar. That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. That's a question that we need to pose to ourselves. And if the answer is no, and they would not like to be with us, and they don't want to know us, and perhaps they hate us, then there is something wrong with our relationship with our employees. We've done something wrong. We're engaged in something wrong. Why? Because they hate us. They don't enjoy our company here. The servant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who chose to do it for himself is happy to actually be with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. In fact, he asks him, I want to be in Jannah with you. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him something profound. He says, فَأَعِنِّي عَلَى نَفْسِكَ بِكَثْرَةِ السُّجُودِ So help me with that request of yours by performing many, many sajda. Now, this means that perform many, many salawat, many, many raka'at for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be my companion in Jannah. You see, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not tell him, I'm rubber stamping your entry into Jannah. But he told him to do something that would get him 
the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. Jannah is not for free. Jannah is earned by hard work. And this is what we gain from this part of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was easy for him to say, I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you and most likely he'll give it to you. Because Jannah is only for Allah to give, but he told him to do something as a result. So if we want Jannah, we can't expect it for free. We've got to work towards it. We've got to make an effort towards it. That salah will earn us the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah as well, if we perform it regularly. So there is a correlation between salah Sajda, prostration for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. When we perform more salawat, more raka'at, we are more likely to be what the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find that at night he would perform so many raka'at and for so long, one raka'ah would be for so long, that his feet would swell up. And Aisha radiallahu anha asked him that, why don't you do, why, why do you do this? Isn't it that you were forgiven all of your sins that were past and any sins that are to come? So he says, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful slave? So this was the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hence, if we follow him in that sunnah, we will be with him in Jannah. The third thing that I'd like to raise from this hadith. So firstly, we spoke about the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and being a servant under the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Secondly, we spoke about being a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah and how we can earn that. Thirdly, I'd like to draw our attention to the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thought of a way to compare in compensate this man for the good deeds that he was doing, for the service that he had rendered to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when someone has done something good for us, we should think of a way to compensate that person. They've come to us with a gift. They've rendered, they've rendered help to us in some way or form. We should think of how we can actually compensate them. And perhaps it's not a compensation at times. Perhaps what they've done is so big that we cannot equal it. The least we can do is show our appreciation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw this man day in, day out, night in, night out. He's there serving the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he asks him, sell, ask for whatever you want. What is it that you'd like, ya Rabi'ah? Do you want something? So this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last point that I'd like to raise is what kind of a companion, what kind of a friend are we to others? And what kind of friends do we choose for ourselves? Are there those whom we'd like to meet in Jannah? Are there those whom we'd like to see and be with in Jannah? Can we imagine ourselves with our companions in Jannah? That's a question that we've got to ask ourselves. And first and foremost, let's say, can we imagine ourselves with our families in Jannah? The type of activities that we engage in in this world will determine what kind of friends we will have in Jannah. So if we are good with our family members and we do good deeds together and we go out and do that which is halal, then we can imagine ourselves with the Anbiya and the Siddiqeen and the Shuhada and the Salihin in Jannah. But if we are doing that which is evil and bad and engaging in that which is haram together, then how can we even imagine ourselves in Jannah? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to ponder over this hadith and to grant us the ability to take full benefit from this hadith.